Okay, welcome to the last part of how to write up your community activity proposal. And this one we're going to look at the learning outcome one, which is the planning and organization um, preparation that you're going to do. So it's all about your goals and what you want to achieve for yourself and for the community. So part of the assessment criteria is that you create an effective plan establishing logical, appropriate and realistic aims and objectives of the community challenge okay really important you know the difference between aims and objectives and there is a sheet on edmodo which uses something called action verbs um, for you to help you to do this this has come straight from the exam board it's not the best laid out but uh, it essentially will give you some some ideas of what it is you want to do it's a nice graphic here about the differences between the aims that's your goal there the aim the objectives are the stepping stones, the smaller parts to let you achieve that aim. So generally you'd have two or three aims and those could be broken down with two, three, four objectives within each aim. So they should consist of two essential parts, an action verb and a subject content. Um, numbering them is again useful, it's really good when you come to evaluate later on when you do your reflection presentation that you can look at what your aims and objectives were in the numbers and come to some conclusion as to whether you met those or partially met them or didn't meet them, etc. when you come to discuss that. So your aims are your general statements, describing what you hope to accomplish. Objectives are specific statements that are about actions which explain the outcomes of the steps for how you're going to go about the challenge. So they tend to be a list of tasks which are normally something practical you do, something measurable, okay, and achievable. Remember again with smart targets, stuff again on Edmodo regarding smart targets when you're developing your objectives they should be smart so what we would look for when you're writing these is that you don't use weak verbs because they're not action verbs okay these are generally perceived to be not um, appropriate for use okay um, you should be using these okay to assemble, to chart, to establish, to produce, to create, to construct, to illustrate, to design, to generate. Okay, that's if that's a that's an objective of a development of a skill. Okay, to put them together, um, to impart knowledge. A lot of you will be teaching these action verbs. You are good to calculate, to compare, to discover, to plan, to explain. And then assessment of attitudes to assess, to justify, to evaluate, to recommend, etc. So all these, what we would want to see, okay, and all the students just just missed this out last year for whatever reason, when you're developing your aims and objectives, is they should start with some of these action verbs. If I show you an example from last year, which was okay, all right, here's a community activity proposal here, so I'll just scroll through this. Um, and you've got at the bottom, we'll get there in a minute, there's a post personal development plan. We've got um, aims and objectives here. So there's a list of aims there, one, two, three, four. So we've got the twos at the start with the aims, but they can identify the needs of the student by interviewing them, their teachers, and checking the reports before we start at the club. We'd prefer you to use these action verbs at the start. There are some in and around here, but not all. So those are the four aims. Um, aim number one, help improve the artistic skills of children in our local school and develop the younger students' skills and confidence with the subject. It was an art class. And so within aim one of improving artistic skills, these are objectives that they hope to do, okay, within that. It's it's partially right and partially wrong, okay, because they, they tend to create more aims, so you've got another aim here, we'll help to improve their reading, writing, communication and literacy skills. Well, that's, that's pretty big. That's a big aim, okay? And that's meant to be an objective. You should break that down into smaller pieces to make that aim overall, okay? So this was a good community activity proposal, but nobody really got to terms with the aims and objectives last year for me to be able to really show you something sort of outstanding with regards to this. Okay, so follow the advice that's on Edmodo when you come to looking at the um, at the aims and objectives. The next part, okay, a comprehensive set of success criteria to evaluate against after your 
you complete the task. I'm not going to go into this because I have made for you, if I get this in the right place, a whole uh, video on that. Okay, somewhere in here, if I can find it, I know I've made it, it's in here, there it is, look, success criteria and planning for feedback. So when you open that up, it'll take you to YouTube and you'll get a whole video on how to do that, okay? With some nice music in the background as well. So pay when you come to doing the success criteria, sorry about that, make sure you watch that video first before you before you do that. Um, any training you need? Is there something you need to be able to do that you can't do? So you need to that. Often it can, you know, things like health and safety, that type of thing would be something you'd need to look at. Um, it could be something specific to the goal that you are, or sorry, the project you're doing. So have a think about that. And if you do need some training, when do you need it by so that you're able to uh, take your coaching sessions or do the um, work you're doing with charities, etc. So that's the first one there. Those are the goals, basically. These are what we want from it, our aims and objectives and the success criteria. Then this is more the sort of the logistics of how and when you're going to do something. This is what you want to achieve in this first part. This is how and when. So things like now allocating resources. So what do you need? You know, do you need, if you're coaching football, do you need a pitch? When do you need that pitch? Who do you need to speak to? When do you need to do that by? What equipment materials do you, do you need? Do you need any money? Do you need to raise some money? Do you need to get some money to do these things? May not be applicable to everything. If you're working in a team, who's going to do this? Who's going to do what? We need to see all your roles and responsibilities. Who's in charge of what? What tasks has this person got? What other tasks have they got? If they've got a big task, can you break that down into smaller tasks in a team, okay? So managing your resources. Time management, this is where your Gantt charts will come in, keeping your project on schedule. You could start off with making like to-do lists and by when and transferring them into, grant, uh, into, into Gantt charts to um, get further marks. There is stuff on Edmodo about making Gantt charts. If anybody's really stuck, message me on you if I'm not back in school and I'll put something together for you if you are struggling with Gantt charts. But there's loads of templates on Edmodo. There's videos about describing how to put them together and what they um, look like. I'll show you an example in a second as well when we go through that. So start times of tasks with estimated durations. Again, estimated that you're not gonna, it's not gonna flow exactly as you plan, nothing ever does. And also deadlines for tasks. Good marks to up in the band three would be to look at contingencies discussed to accommodate change. So if, I don't know, you became ill or you lost the use of a venue, was there anything else you could think of now in the plan where if, if things did happen, any contingencies that you had? So a nice section on that. Students last year tended to avoid this and forget that, that it was there. Wouldn't have to be a lot, but it's nice that you consider some contingencies if problems did occur. And then the activities, so what are the tasks to complete according to the Gantt chart, so what do you need to do? Activities don't just have to be about what you do in the 30 hours, they could be in relation to preparation, speaking to people, finding things, booking things, that kind of, that kind of stuff. And then your, your targets, so what targets have you set through the stages of planning? Evidence plan team meetings, so if you're in a team, in your proposal you should have dates where you plan to meet to review what's going on. Dates and feedback dates from your community. If you've watched the uh, success criteria video, it talks about this. There should be different points where you're speaking to your community to get some feedback from them to adapt your plan. In, the, in task two, it's not just about doing the 30 hours, it's documenting and managing that plan and any changes that occur. And changes could occur due to feedback from the people you're working with. So some students you're doing art with say, oh, can we, we don't like doing this, could we do this, can we look at doing that? And you might change the types of lessons you're doing, so anything like that. And then risks, health and safety, risk assessments. You'll find loads of risk assessment um, templates online. You can find your own from that. I'll show you an example in a second when I switch to the work. And identify these and plan responses and contingencies. There's a whole PowerPoint on this as well on Edmodo for you to to read. Um, so the actual work itself, I'll just briefly have a quick scan through this. So we've got aims and objectives here, here's resources, 
you can see this was a team-based one. Remember, I just discussed roles and responsibilities, so what everybody's doing there. Here's a Gantt chart to manage things. So this was preparation of the, of the people working with, the preparation of the classroom, gathering materials, time planning was placed in there. And there's a risk assessment year for, from teaching. Okay, so it wasn't, it's not a huge, huge amount of work, this kind of stuff, okay? But you would, um, you know, you, you need to cover all these all these bases. So, so finally, any of the stuff that I've talked about, you will find information, like I said, on Edmodo. Break it down bit by bit, okay? As you're doing your planning for your controlled assessment, just take it a section at a time and don't worry about the next section until you're happy with the one you've gone through, okay? Won't require huge and huge hours and hours and hours worth of work, but make sure you do that. If there's any areas you really don't understand and you're really struggling with, remember to always revert back to our model, go to the learning outcome where you're struggling and look for the information that's there um, to help you to do that. You can, if I'm not back in school, contact me through Edmodo. I will check it every day for messages and you can message me through um, through this system as well, um, asking questions, etc. that you, you need for this project. Okay, so now once you've looked at these, we've got two weeks from the time I did this until a week Friday, on a week Friday, November the 11th, we'll be doing this. Make sure you know exactly what you are going to be writing in all of these areas here. You can take as much research in with you as you like and you can use the internet as well. So you can plan nearly all of this out, okay, beforehand and then put it all together into a plan that's going to get you a band three. Like I say, anything you might want, you might need to ask, you can contact me via Edmodo. Okay, thank you very much.